Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar, webinar today. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. The webinar is being recorded and will be made available to all attendees. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A window on your screen, and we will address those at the end of the presentation. So the topic of today's presentation is cloud-managed Wi-Fi, a cornerstone of digital transformation. On the call with us, we have Leslie Han, Vice President at IDC Retail Insights, and Jeanette Lee, Director of Global Field Enablement at Ruckus. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Leslie to get us started. Joining us for the webinar this morning. Uh, we hope you find it informative and uh, welcome any uh, feedback or questions afterwards. Um, so, you know, just to, to kick this off, I just um, you know, I, I plan on talking about three fundamental things today. The new retail rea reality, right, the elephant in the room, what's going on, how are retailers investing, and that leads us to the three fundamental opportunities we see at IDC uh, within the retail space um, for retailers to make big changes in the way that they invest in technology to drive uh, their performance um, improvement objectives. Um, and today we're focusing on, uh, you know, cloud-based mobility, enabling uh, Wi-Fi investments and that sort of thing. So we'll talk some about that, you know, how mobility and cloud uh, play into those technology investment strategies. So just to start off, what is keeping retailers up at night? You know, why are some doing pretty well? and why are others struggling? Uh, it's kind of the elephant in the room, and maybe uh, we've talked enough about it, but, but truly, um, you know, it, it is about developing better relationships with your customer, right? Balancing engagement in all the channels that you do business. And, you know, key uh, value propositions that come from the technologies that you invest in to engage your customer better are gonna drive better relationships. And we've talked about that extensively at IDC. We've talked about the three R's. You know, you can't bottle it. It's relationship, relevancy, and reach. And there isn't a single formula, but, but you can replicate the success. So let's look at that. The new reality is your customers are inherently digital, right? Um, when they come into your stores, when they approach your digital properties, they have this new way of purchasing, um, you know, and companies are becoming digital in order to engage their customers better. And I don't mean just from a digital commerce perspective, but through and through becoming digital so that when uh, uh, a customer is in your store, um, you are truly responsive to their needs in close to real time. So, you know, uh, one of the things that I was hoping to talk about today is precisely what are the winners doing? And we see that there are three different types of winners in the marketplace, and these are some significant shifts that have occurred in the marketplace. So if we scan across retail to see what's working well, um, other retailers might want to try to emulate these. First, there are those companies that are born digital or tech-led. They're the net new companies that have taken market share away from established players, and they're doing business very differently than those traditional retailers. I'm talking about companies like Textiles, that's, you know, Fabletics, Just Fab, and Shoe Dazzle, Bonobos, Warby Parker. We've, you know, heard about these guys in the marketplace quite a lot. But then there's those uh, retailers that are converging, right? And when I say converging, I mean, perhaps, you know, they're brands that started digital, they're opening stores, um, Maybe they're expanding their digital and physical presence. Maybe they're broadening their assortments. Maybe they're developing new partnerships, for example, putting restaurants in retail stores. Um, and then there's the third category, and these are retailers that are really digitally transforming themselves and reimagining their brands. Who are they fundamentally? Um, you know, what is their business model? How do they go to market? What does their customer want? Um, and these folks are the guys that have a hyper focus on customer, right? So I think of companies like Nordstrom, their intense focus on relationships, right? Um, they, they know who their customer is. But really, any retailer can 
rethink who they are and what their, who their customer wants them to be, right? And that's, that's really what the message is here. And oftentimes, retailers kind of get stuck thinking about, well, we're not doing well because somebody else is doing well and they're stealing our market share, right? Well, we don't think that's a, a really good approach to solving the problem. A uh, better idea is to think about why is your customer making the buying decisions they're making and how can you engage them better in your physical and digital spaces? So how are you improving customer loyalty? Um, and of course, you know, Amazon is a force to be reckoned with, uh, but so are many of these other disruptors I just talked about, the textiles of the world who went from zero to 700 million uh, in the fashion uh, category in just seven years. Um, wouldn't a lot of retailers like to have that sort of performance improvement year over year? Um, so, so let's talk about um, how some of these winners are making those investments, right? How are they shifting the balance? Um, we, we did this prediction last year, our, our uh, 20, uh, 18 predictions will be played in early November or, or the end of November. Um, but, but our prediction was that by 2019, digital transformation investments will triple, drawing funds away from store capital, profoundly changing the retail industry. And what we meant by that was that retailers were going to look at their digital physical properties and decide what needed more investment and what didn't. And most likely some investment was gonna come out of physical spaces to go back into technology that goes into the physical spaces that remain, right? Um, and, and this enables them to disrupt change and at bare minimum accommodate the customer in their stream of life as they come into their stores. And this is the key, right? It's what does your customer want and how are you providing the environment that they want to shop in? So that said, um, we think there's three fundamental opportunities um, for retailers to invest in technologies to make better connections with customers. First of all, um, enable seamless, frictionless connections everywhere the customer shops, right? You have to be customer focused to the core you have to leverage cloud and mobile, right? Be cloud and mobile first to connect with consumers, but also to facilitate driving change faster, right? To continually keep up with what the customer wants. Secondly, you want to optimize data utilization. Retailers have data, right? We just don't necessarily use it as well as we could. So you'll want to capture, ingest, and analyze data to understand the customer better, and then leverage those insights to drive better customer engagement. And you'll also use that data to improve operational efficiencies. And thirdly, you'll want to capitalize on retail architecture shifts. So the technology you use to drive change is gonna set you up for success, right? And if you implement technologies that are adaptable, you're going to be able to continually implement new capabilities, new processes, new programs uh, that enable the customer to connect, um, enable the customer to continue to have the experience uh, in your properties that they want to have. And that is really going to be the key to ongoing success. So, you know, uh, when, when IDC looks at uh, some of these newer technologies um, that have become available for us to incorporate uh, into the way that we serve the customer better, um, we see a lot of companies going off and establishing innovation centers and doing a lot of work around innovation. Um, but uh, what we hope to see more of is more work around looking at the use cases that your customer wants. So if you look across the bottom of this page, um, you'll see uh, areas that we think uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, for investment, leveraging these technologies that are listed across the top, uh, mobile, cloud, et cetera, in order to engage the customer better. Um, you'll you'll see that retailers are increasingly investing in cloud-based services 
because it helps them get their jobs done faster, right? It helps them connect with the customer better. It also takes the responsibility of keeping up with new customer requirements away from them. But Jeanette's gonna talk a lot more about that later when we get to her, to her part of the presentation. Okay, challenge advancing, there we go. Um, so at IDC, um, we've benchmarked retailers that are digitally transforming their businesses, or, or actually we've just benchmarked retailers against the maturity model for digital transformation. And if you uh, look at the last pair of columns in this chart, you'll notice that uh, there's survivors and thrivers. And basically, all I wanted to say on this chart is you'll notice that those um, retailers that are most mature from a digital transformation perspective, they've optimized their businesses for digital transformation. They're three times uh, more likely to be a thriver, meaning they're out, uh, well outperforming um, the folks that we consider survivors. So that's just an important note of the value around uh, looking at your business holistically from a digital transformation perspective. And quickly, not gonna talk about this slide in any kind of depth, just wanna point out that it's very important that uh, retailers benchmark themselves against their competitors and that they use tools to try to identify those places um, where there's gonna be the most value in their technology investments, right? Speeds the process, helps them develop kind of horizon one, horizon two, horizon three roadmaps for, for investing in technology. Um, and can accelerate your success. That said, if we drill into the places within our use case taxonomy that you just saw on the previous page, um, you'll notice that mobility, this is all use cases that have some mobile component, is very pervasive across um, most of the areas of the business those areas where you engage consumers directly or with associate assistance, but it's also a key component in strategies for improving operational efficiency. And you'll also notice that cloud isn't highlighted as a process or a use case, because it's not a process or a use case. Cloud's a delivery method, right? So, so cloud will enable the business to focus on business strategy to figure out which of these capabilities to deploy cloud will facilitate getting that done faster, right? Um, and more flexibly just to continue to support business, business need. And so now if we turn more specifically to wireless, um, you know, it's really important to, to recognize, to say out loud, that being mobile and having wireless access is plain old fundamental to how individuals get things done anymore, right? Whether we're at work or whether it's in our personal lives. Um, so, so clearly, you know, we understand that mobile and wireless is just a way of, of engaging in all areas of our lives. So from a retail perspective, implementing Wi-Fi in physical spaces enables you to be the king of your domain. And what we mean by that is it's that building block that you can then layer with a variety of capabilities over time, including you know, product search, inventory lookups, wayfinding, push marketing, shopping, checkout, guest, guest Wi-Fi, productivity apps, the list goes on and on. Um, but the point is, it's all about enabling best-in-class consumer experiences, right? Engaging the consumer as best you can for your retail model, right, um, uh, in order to provide that seamless experience. And if you think about it, reflect on it. What consumer doesn't want a seamless experience and doesn't want to kind of move through their life connected, um, you know, uh, bringing in components of their digital into their physical life and vice versa? Um, and thirdly, wireless, improves top line and bottom line business performance. So having good Wi-Fi influences customer satisfaction, which makes them stay longer in your store, dwell time increases, loyalty increases. And we know that when brand value 
uh, since it's so heavily influenced by loyalty, brand value will increase and those loyal shoppers will use social media to amplify um, the message around the good experience they had. And, and then if we look at operational performance, um, you know, the productivity gains achieved by mobile equipped workers have been well documented um, and the, the, both from the perspective of being more productive, but also reducing the cost of customer care. So uh, important things to consider as you look at these investments. And just to reiterate, stable, fast Wi-Fi is foundational, right? Um, basically, you know, ask yourselves, what is this foundation composed of? What does the consumer actually want? Well, they want to do what they want to do, right? They want to browse online, they want to read reviews, they want to catch up on social media while their partner is shopping, right, and they're lounging. Um, but it has to be convenient and it has to work perfectly every single time. And it has to be free, right? Um, keeping them in the store is gonna make them spend more money and therefore it justifies uh, the cost of doing it for, for most retailers. But you know, no matter what your consumer is doing, even if you're sending hyper-personalized offers to their phone directly, um, it, it, you know, there are, there are a myriad of reasons um, uh, why engagement matters, right? If you're not engaging them, somebody else will. Um, and frankly, you know, your employees are, are, expect the same sort of engagement and experience from a work perspective these days. So, so the Wi-Fi uh, network also supports um, their work satisfaction. So now I want to turn to uh, the, the retail architecture shifts. And, you know, this is really a conceptual chart. Um, you know, like I said before, retailers have a lot of data, um, but it's a bigger challenge to actually use that data well. So what this chart is um, trying to convey is that there's an intelligent core that informs engagement and drives planning, right? And that's what makes us more productive. It makes us sort better. It makes us send better messages to our consumers. Um, it makes us know the, the context and the intent of consumer shopping patterns so that we can engage them in motion in our physical spaces. Um, but, uh, so, so, and this is a very fluid model, you know, the, the icons on either side aren't fixed in those places. It's all about ingesting data and exporting data um, in order to create better engagement in the end, right? It's, it's all about bringing new data sets in, making them actionable in real time, right? Because all that really matters in the end is the outcomes, right? Did we improve? business performance, did we improve the customer experience, um, and, and can we continue to do that over time? Can we continually adapt, right? Um, and this intelligent core can live in the cloud, um, just like anything, um, and in various application areas, uh, retailers are investing quite heavily in uh, cloud-based capabilities. So let's talk a little bit more about specific benefits. We've done, um, uh, or the, the data on this page represents three different surveys that we've done at IDC uh, related to retail investments in Wi-Fi and infrastructure services. And basically 51% of retailers report that they've already installed guest Wi-Fi, but there's also a lot of upgrades in process, 45% have implemented mobile devices for store employees. Um, and one of the questions I'd ask you is, 40% say they're implementing within 24 months. Are you implementing? <laughs> um, and generally speaking, from a store infrastructure perspective, there are significant investments. Like I said, retailers are digitally transforming that store space 
to be digitally connected and to engage the consumer better. We've talked about this for years, but it's coming to fruition. And I think, you know, the way I started the presentation today, talking about the significant shifts we see in the retail marketplace in the last year, the number of stores that have closed, and I don't want to dwell on that, but but also just the new business value creation that's coming from these new types of retail companies, you know, those converged companies, those born digital companies. It's just driving us to, to create spaces that are much more engaging uh, for the consumer. So let's talk a little bit about strategic benefits of cloud. And um, top three benefits, uh, if you read down the chart, include improved agility, improved security, and access to the latest functionality. And what I find so interesting about that is when we look at the benefits of cloud Wi-Fi services, there's a one-to-one correl -one correlation with the benefit of benefits of cloud to cloud, cloud Wi-Fi services, improved agility, improved security, access to latest functionality, but you also get simpler management, configuration, and user, user setup, um, simple user setup uh, is also a benefit. Provisioning doesn't require that you go to the store, um, and perhaps most important, uh, there are benchmarks uh, for some capabilities on the marketplace uh, that demonstrate that uh, systems perform better. Um, so that's something to evaluate and consider. And so in, in summary, retailers have a ton of stuff to do, right? Um, there are three things we know for sure. They need to digitally transform to align with customer needs to win. They need to understand how to prioritize needs and incorporate modern retail architectures into their technology investment plans. And that includes how to deploy technology, right? Knowing what they should manage versus what's better to outsource to a managed cloud provider. Our recommendation is to focus on business strategy and let the experts manage IT. In regards to Wi-Fi solutions, retailers should look for reliable, secure, flexible Wi-Fi. They should look for remote management and monitoring of multiple sites. They should look for automatic feature and security updates. And, you know, mobile first should be a mantra for every organization. They should have mobile app-based management and analytics and easy setup of customized and branded guest networks for their guests. So with that, I'd like to just suggest that change is not optional. Refusing to go to the gym is not the same thing as resistance training. Thank you very much for your attention today. And with that, I'd like to, to pass the ball to Jeanette. Great, thanks, Leslie. Okay, that was wonderful. So let's talk a little bit more about the Ruckus way of looking at these things here. And let me just move forward here on the slides. So what I wanna to talk to you about today is going to be on the ruckus side of things for cloud Wi-Fi. And I think Leslie did a great introduction on the benefits of the cloud. I think it's pretty well understood as far as what you're gonna get from this, the flexibility, the ease of use, having the, uh, being able to focus on other things beyond just day-to-day -day operation of the wireless. Ideally, the wireless should just work and you really shouldn't be spending a lot of time thinking about it because you've got a lot of other stuff to do, right? You've got a lot of devices out there that you need to think about and worry about. How are you going to get all those people connected? How are you going to get your own devices connected? Can you support new applications and new devices? And what's going to happen and what are they going to do and how do you control it? And then how do you plan on moving from what you have today to what you might have 12 months, 18 months, 24 months down the road? And all those things come into play here as part of what Leslie was talking about with that digital transformation and enabling new ways to use the network and to use your interaction with your customers to enrich the experience for both of you. Now, the Ruckus Cloud 
and I should step back here a moment and say, for those of you who are familiar with Ruckus or have heard the name, you've probably heard us in the context of performance. Ruckus is known as having some of the best radios, the best access points on the market. It's where we started and where we made our name. And so when we talk about things like, for us, performance being foundational, that's part of where that's coming from is that understanding that you can have great management and you could have a great story for investment protection or great pricing compared to the competitors. But if the wireless doesn't work, it doesn't matter, right? If you can't connect, stay connected and go fast and run the applications you need to do, then nothing else really is going to matter. So you have to start there but then from there, you can add on all these other great features that are necessary to have a complete solution. And that's Ruckus Wi-Fi. And of course, where it starts here is this visibility, which Leslie was also mentioning about having that visibility to see what's going on in your network, what's happening, what people are doing. And that's a big part of the Ruckus Wi-Fi solution here is enabling you to have that kind of visibility and control in the network. One of the ways that we do this is by having a couple different ways of coming into the system, if you will, or interacting with the system, which, of course, then allows you to interact with the people that are on your network. One of the things you can see here is a, uh, an app that we have that's part of the cloud Wi-Fi. This works on mobile phones. So, for example, if you are on-premise and you're walking around and you want to see what's going on with the network, you don't have to run to the back office. You can just bring out your phone and see what's going on. And that can be handy for just checking in to see what's going on with the network anytime or any place. And it's going to give you visibility with that single pane of glass to beyond just a single retail location. It can be multiple locations. It could be pretty much anywhere and have that connectivity and that visibility into what's happening on the network at any time. And of course, all that flows then into what else can I do, right? Because of course you have the app, which is extremely handy, but there's a lot of tasks that might need to be done or that you might want to have the option of doing. And that's where then you get into the real interface and the real thinking behind the network. And one of the things that when I talk to Ruckus customers and to our partners, and I talk to them a lot, I'm out in the field a lot. And when I ask them, what do you like about Ruckus? What do you think is the key thing that you think of when you think of us? What I usually get back as a response is, it just works, right? Because ideally that's what you want, right? You want it to just work and not be something you have to sweat over, not something you have to think about, not something that you have to send people out to spend a week getting trained on and get all kinds of certifications on or anything like that. You just want it to work because at the end of the day, you're not in the business of running a wireless network, you're in the business of running your business. And we want to make you successful at doing that by taking that burden of the wireless off your plate as much as possible. So that comes into things like uh, the streamlined interface, right? Having that app so you don't have to go back and get on your computer and get connected and launch a browser and all that to do some common tasks. But when you do need to be in the whole interface, we want to make it simple and easy to understand. So you can just jump into it, see what's happening, get that at a glance description, that dashboard showing you what's happening, and then from there be able to just drill down into the information that you need and not have too much distraction, too many things where you, you have to click around and say, well, is this going to get me there or I don't remember, how did I get there last time? Just make it easy, take that out, right? Because that's the other foundational piece of all this is you need the performance and now we come back and we talk about that um, that easy to use, easy to manage, this is something that I can handle kind of thing, but with the growth opportunities to add new features and functionalities. Because as Leslie was saying, that's another advantage of the cloud is this ability to get all these premium features and to get the latest code and to get the latest support so that when something comes out and people say, oh, well, we needed to have a patch for that. Well, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about your data center being up all the time. You don't have to worry about planning for geo redundancy and disaster recovery because all that is in the cloud. It's all running in our cloud where we have all that work that we're doing for you. And when there's a new update, when there's a new feature, you get it automatically because it's all part of cloud. So that's a big plus in the cloud, of course, is taking all that work off of the plate 
but giving you all this stuff automatically, right? And so that's a definite win here. And of course, as I talked about going drilling into that app a little bit more, right? We want to make all these features very seamless. And as Leslie was saying, the word she used, which I liked a lot, was frictionless, right? You want to be able to do what you need to do, get in, get out, move on, do something else. So that's where that app, going back to that a little bit, it's more than just the monitoring, which is what I showed you in that first slide there. It's more than just seeing what's on the network or seeing how many APs are up or how many clients are up, but you can also go in and get some control over what's happening, re rebooting APs or maybe creating new networks or making uh, um, configuration changes, you know, provisioning. Adding a new AP can be a very painful experience depending on how you're trying to do it especially if it's you have to get the AP up, um, out, you have to get it provisioned somehow, you have to get it installed, make sure it connects back to the right controller, it gets the right software, it gets the right config. And that's another place that the, uh, the phone app can really help a lot because it has an easy way to provision a new AP. It's as simple as take the AP, take out your phone, launch the app, scan the uh, barcode on it, which will then capture the serial number and the MAC address of that AP. Tell it, here's the venue I want it to be in for this location, as an example. And then you plug in the AP. And the AP will automatically go out to the cloud, connect to the cloud Wi-Fi, figure out, oh, okay, we know about this AP. It's already been provisioned. It's going to this venue and this location, and here are the configs, and it gets downloaded automatically. So within a matter of minutes, You've gone from taking a picture of the outside of the box for the AP to one that's up running the latest code and running your configuration, and now you can see it and manage it through the app or if you want to through the uh, web UI, your choice. So that's, again, this whole thing of making things simple, making it easy. So you don't have to necessarily even have an IT person on hand if you want to install a new AP or deploy something where people maybe didn't have any wireless at all. So it's just as easy as take that box, ship it to them, and if they have the app, they can bring it up themselves and get things rolling. So it just makes things very, very simple. You could even, if you wanted to, take a picture of that serial number, provision the AP without ever taking it out of the box, and then send it to your location and let them plug it in so they don't even need the app at all. So it's just another way of that whole frictionless, seamless way of deploying the network, monitoring and managing the network without having to spend a lot of time on it, but still getting the advantages, right, those foundational advantages of easy to deploy, easy to manage, and having great wireless so you have a great experience, both for yourself but also for your customers. And as I said, coming back here a little bit to that performance, because we do think that that is really important, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes here and talk about it. Um, as I said before, Ruckus is known for doing perform for great performance. That's where we made our name. We originally, one of our first applications was doing streaming IPTV in residences, which in those days was on 2.4 gigahertz in the 11 B and G. And if you think about that, that's actually pretty tough. And we learned a lot from that kind of very challenging RF environment. We learned how to design and build something, and we have a lot of patented hardware and software technology that together we call BeamFlex, and we use this in order to create an AP that automatically can adapt and change as your environment changes, because that is the one thing about RF that I have found that can be the trickiest thing to manage and can be the trickiest thing to control as well. When you lay a cable, when you put down a wire and connect something on a wire, your wired network is probably not going to change. It's going to be the same today as it was yesterday, as it was a year ago, and it's going to perform about the same, assuming the applications are the same. That's not the case with RF and with wireless, because it's very sensitive to interference. Someone might bring up a new network next to your uh, location, and that network could start interfering with your devices but you don't have the time to go in there and check it and see what's going on. So you need to have that, that agility on the RF side of things to constantly be checking what's going on with the environment and making the adjustments necessary to continue to have solid performance regardless of what the environment is throwing at you. And that's where all these things come from. And of course, laying on top of that, then we can add things like density, 
being able to support a lot of devices or being able to support devices that have very specific requirements, performance requirements such as latency and jitter. If you're going to be doing something like voice over IP or video over the wireless, that can be very important. The story is about more than just bandwidth, it's about how well do we handle that application. And then, of course, being able to deal with the interference. So all these things are extremely important, and when I talk about foundational for performance, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of how that plays out in a real world conditions, um, about a month or so ago, we did a joint testing and came out with a competitive report where we had a independent consultant from Divergent Dynamics come and validate some testing that we had done. And the way we had done this is we used real world environment. We were in a school, happened to be the location we used, not with the fanciest, highest end, highest performing devices out there you could find with a mid-range AP, the Ruckus R610. And we tested it against some of our competitors to see what would happen. Primarily, we were testing it in a video application because data is data and we wanted to see what happens when we engage that quality of experience where we require a particular level of quality of service in order to handle that application. So what you're seeing here is two data points. The first data point, the blue bar, is showing how many video devices the network, the AP, was able to support without anything else happening on the network. No other devices, no interference, just video clients on these two by two uh, device, Chromebook devices. And you can see here that on the Ruckus side, we were one of two that was able to handle all 60 video clients. We used two tests, one with 30 video clients and one with 60. And we were one of two that could do 60, all 60 video clients without stalling. Then when we added data, when we had a couple clients, just two clients adding data, it really changed things a lot. And you can see where that impact can really come into play here, because now on the green bar, you see what happens when that data was added to the mix. And once again, the Ruckus R610 was the only one that was able to manage and still continue to service all 60 video clients with their streaming video without being impacted by the data. And so when I talk about performance, these are the kinds of things I'm talking about. Although we all like to see the highest data rates and we all love to see that we got 800 megabits download or something like that, the reality is you got clients, you got applications, and it's more important to be able to run the applications that you need. <clears throat> Another thing that Leslie also touched on is this ability to evolve with changing needs because nothing stands still, right? Your RF environment doesn't stand still, your business doesn't stand still, everything's moving and changing. And you may at some point decide, well, maybe I want to move away from cloud Wi-Fi. Maybe I would like to do something else. And one of the great things about the Ruckus portfolio that I really like is although we started with access points, and we started with hardware appliance-based controllers, we have evolved a lot since then. And now we have the controllers, the hardware controllers, we have the cloud Wi-Fi, we have controllerless access points where the controller function is built into the APs, and we have virtual controllers that could just run on a VM server. And you have your choice of any of these. And the great thing is the access points you buy today for cloud as an example can run on any of those platforms. So if at some point you decide, hey, I really want to uh, look at having maybe controllerless access points in each of my locations, or I want to have a controller in my data center, you have that option and you get to keep all the investment that you made in that hardware up front. Nothing changes, APs move, and then you've got your new features and your new architecture model. And that's something that works very well for many of my customers. The other thing which becomes really important, I think particularly in retail, if you're going to be doing that customer engagement, is how they get into the network, how they get on it, and then how you interact with them. Because if they're getting on your network, you have that opportunity for some kind of engagement. And a very common way is to have some kind of captive portal, some kind of browser come up uh, when they first log in that maybe gives them a greeting or explains things like daily specials, to example, for example, to them, maybe sales that come in. Uh, you could also have this opportunity to get more information about the people connecting. So, for example, maybe you'll have them log in by entering their uh, social media credentials, uh, their Google or their Facebook or their Twitter or something like that, which would now you start to build up a profile of the people who are connecting to. So not only have you given them some information in the form of you know, coupons, sales, whatever, 
but you're getting a little bit of information back from them in terms of demographics. And all of this can be extremely valuable. So all that comes into play here, and then this example that you see on the screen here is showing what I was talking about with that captive portal and being able to adjust the branding to match whatever it is you need to see. It's also one of those things where I think that handheld uh, app I told you about that can run on the smartphones or the tablets can really shine here. Because if you're going to use your captive portal with your customers for some kind of engagement like daily specials or coupons or, some, or sales or something like that, you're going to be updating that portal a lot, especially if it's daily, then it's every day, right? So you're going to be in that captive portal possibly making these changes, and wouldn't it be nice if you could just do it on the phone? You decide, well, it's going to be dinner, or excuse me, it's going to be the lunch crowd coming in soon. Let's do a sale, right? Let's have a special two-for-one or something like that. And you put it up on the web page, and when they come into the store and they get on the wireless, they see it. So it's as easy as that. Just make it frictionless, right? Making it very easy to engage. And that's where this whole thing is coming into play. And a part of what I talked about when I said making things easier, right? Getting out of the way of the business so that it just works the way you need it to do. And then, of course, the other piece that Leslie also talked about was insight, right, which is a different kind of engagement where you can then come back and see, well, what was happening on my network or maybe uh, have some visibility into the things they were trying to do with your network. And once again, the cloud has part of it comes with a big data analytics engine. So you have that ability to go in and do some in-depth analysis of how people were getting on your network, how much bandwidth they were using, for example, or applications, so what they were doing on the network as well. So this is another way that you can get some information out of that network that can be then helpful for how you want to plan to expand or grow your business, or at least understand why people are coming to your location and what they want to do when they get there. So here's a case study. I wanted to bring this up. I like this one because it's interesting about how it actually talks about multimedia as an example. So Choose Fitness is a uh, um, chain of gyms. And the problem that they were having is people would come into these gyms and of course they want to bring in their phones and they want to watch a movie, watch a TV show, they want to listen to their music while they're exercising or something like that. And they were having a very poor experience. So people would come in and they weren't able to do this. And that was an issue that was causing some um, missed opportunities for the gym. And they also had coverage holes. So I, maybe I could come in and work, but then I'd get to the back of the gym where the weights are, for example, and all of a sudden my connection dropped and now I can't do, listen to the uh, music I was listening to while I did my workout. So for them, these were the main pain points, but they also had an issue where they were trying to manage all their different sites. As a chain of gyms, they have a lot of locations and all of them need to have a consistent experience because if I'm going to be a member there, I want to have the same experience no matter where I go. So the solution they chose, of course, was Ruckus and with the 11 AC access points using the cloud wireless. And that allowed them to deploy very fast and reliable wireless services that, were, um, that gave their customers and their employees a great experience. And that's what we're about. When I talk about the ruckus and I talk about the cloud Wi-Fi, this is the kind of thing that I love to do for my customers, is giving them a great quality of experience is how we like to talk about it here. It isn't so much, you know, all these little different factors as far as what makes a great wireless and what makes it, you know, easy to use. At the end of the day, I can sum it up into one term, which is that whole quality of experience. How do I experience the wireless? How do I engage with my customers? How do I engage in, uh, and uh, executing my business over the wireless. So these are all the things that are there, and you can definitely you can come to our website if you want to download the full case study and read more about this and other customers who have deployed cloud Wi-Fi. So then just to sum everything up here, this comes back to what I was talking about before, right, about the benefits that we believe that Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi can bring to you and to how you do your business is that high quality of experience, right, that consistent, uh, reliable wireless that's always there. People can get on, they can stay on, they can do what they need to do. Making it easy to deploy, right, you don't want this to be difficult. You've got other things to do in your life than babysit the wireless all the time. We want it to just work. Right? For me, that's the best thing that my customers can tell me is it just works. That's awesome. And of course, making this something that's affordable, right? I mean, there are lots of uh, great 
things out there that you could buy, but if they're too expensive, then they're not great options. So being able to have this, um, have this high performance um, in an achievable budget with all the different AP options that we have out there can really help to meet all the different requirements or all the different price points that people might have. And then coming into that whole um, discussion as well is that investment protection, right? Unlike some competitors who if you stop the subscription, their APs basically die and they're just bricks, that's not going to be the case for us. You will always have an option with those access points. If you choose not to continue with the cloud Wi-Fi subscription, you have a lot of different options depending on how you want to manage and deploy your wireless. And the thing is you'll be able to keep that great wireless and have all those features and just migrate to a different platform that meets your new business needs. So in a word, that's where I would sum up the wireless and sum up Ruckus, right, is being able to have all these things together, giving you that seamless, frictionless experience with cloud Wi-Fi. So with that, I'm going to stop and take a few minutes for questions here. Thank you, Jeanette. A quick reminder to all the attendees, please enter your questions into the Q&A window. Um, so I've seen a couple come through. Um, so here's one. What kind of retailers are investing in cloud-based Wi-Fi services? Uh, is that going to be for Leslie, I think? <laughs> I, I can go first, Jeanette, and then um, you can jump okay. in if you want to ask something. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, so, um, so interesting, interestingly, there, there really doesn't seem to be kind of a, you can't really draw a line that says um, this retailer, this type of retailer, whether it be by size, you know, revenue size, or, or by a specific retail segment, that they won't invest in cloud-based Wi-Fi, right? Um, what we're seeing in the marketplace is, you know, um, companies that are tens of billions <laughs> um, of dollars in, in, in revenue size uh, per year and very small companies can leverage cloud-managed services, generally speaking, in a variety of areas across their, their business. So. Um, uh, but, but I think uh, specifically related to the ruckus model where the as a service takes away so much of the pain of the kind of the smaller IT shop, uh, there's an added value, right? Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that other retailers wouldn't also be interested in the capability. Um, at least that's uh, the way that, that uh, we see it. We have a lot of data to support the investments from a segment and uh, um, uh, you know revenue band uh, perspective in cloud. So if anybody's interested, I'm always interested in in taking questions after. Jeanette, okay. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as what I've seen on my side, it, it's been, as, you, as Leslie said, it's been a mix. Uh, it's been, I've seen people from across the different spectrum of different businesses. People talk about the traditional coffee shop mentality, right? But it's many different businesses and many different approaches to this. Sometimes people deploy the wireless and they're not going to do guest access. They choose to use it just for their internal operations and their day to day. And that's perfectly fine too, right? Or sometimes it is going to be primarily a wireless guest experience as well, because as Leslie, as she had mentioned earlier, people come in and the longer you can stay them, keep them in your location, the more likely they are to spend money. So that's always a good thing. And if you give them an opportunity and a reason to spend money, that's good too. And any chance you have for touching them and having that engagement is beneficial. I've seen people who, and Ruckus customers as a matter of fact, who when they found out we had a Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi and they already had Ruckus, they said, well, I actually prefer this model, so I'm going to move from my controller-based deployment, as an example, and go over to switch to Cloud Wi-Fi because it gives me that ease of use and even easier use, I should say, than what I had before, and that's the experience that I was going for. Great. Here's another question, interesting interesting one. Do customers want to be marketed to directly on their mobile device when they enter a store? Are there other less intrusive ways to engage with customers? Um, I'll go ahead and start on that one here. So I think that the easiest way is that captive portal, simply because 
although you could say it's somewhat intrusive, they connect to the network and all of a sudden they're going to see this splash screen. On the other hand, that's the customary experience that people have. So they're, they're used to the fact that, okay, I want to get on the wireless, I'm going to see this screen come up and it's going to, you know, say click here and connect or something like that. And that's pretty low effort for most of the users. So I think that's a pretty decent way of doing these kinds of things. I mean, obviously you can get far more elaborate beyond that. There are applications that could let you do things like, for example, maybe you don't require a login. There's no social login. They just click OK and they continue. But you could add on layers of something else, like, for example, um, doing some kind of uh, uh, in-place uh, advertising, as an example. So when they go and they're connecting to the network in the little corner, they might see your business's ad as one of the ads that's showing up on their web page because people are used to seeing that anyway. And I think all of those are pretty low key, uh, but still gives you some uh, visibility to your customers. Leslie, did you want to weigh in on that one? Yeah, you know, I, um, I, well, I was gonna just kind of add, uh, some commentary slightly uh, different than that, but you know, more more around the customer actually wants to engage. What we've seen is that retailers will figure out, well, how much does my customer want to engage, right? And and they'll figure out um, um, methods um, that work for them. So sometimes it's the the big screens, you know. Sometimes it's a uh, interactive shelf talker of sorts. Sometimes it's, um, you know, logging in through that portal. Um, sometimes it's application-based. Sometimes it does involve beacons or, or some other form of uh, location-based uh, engagement. So there's a wide variety of things going on. We always recommend kind of a test and fail <laughs> uh, kind of approach to, to these capabilities. See what sticks with your customers. But don't expect everybody to do it day one. You know, it just doesn't happen that way. Um, you have to you have to have patience uh, for adoption to build, and you have to be persistent in testing what's really working. So, good points, Jeanette. Great. Here's another one. Um, what types of digital transformation initiatives generally have the highest ROI? Leslie, do you want to take that one? Could, could you repeat which kind of digital transformation initiatives? Is that what you said? Yeah, generally have the highest ROI. Yeah, so, so you know, um, retailers generally look to these capabilities that drive better customer engagement um, kind of from an upside perspective, right? They're the things they think will drive better sales, however, what we're seeing is also a big shift towards enabling um, mobility inside the physical space because that drives significant productivity improvements, and so from an operational perspective. Um, so, you know, it, it really becomes a matter of how do I get to ROI faster, right? How do I get that deployed in a way that I can start capitalizing on that benefit? So, uh, so we do see an interest uh, kind of broadly in cloud-based capabilities because, because of the fact that they get to ROI faster and also because of the fact retailers are figuring out that some of the things they used to think they, they owned best practice on, they don't really own best practice on anymore, <laughs> you know, that they just need to be as good Keep, keep pace by aligning with technology providers that will keep pace or accelerate, be the leader in a space uh, better than, than their competitors, right? So they need to rely on those partners to help them um, continue to reap the benefit that they're promised. Great. Um, it looks like we have time for just one last question. Um, how can I improve Wi-Fi coverage in my stores without continuously upgrading and buying more APs? Okay, well, I think that's probably a question for me here then. I think that because the trick, I think, with Wi-Fi deployments, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, is the fact that you can have a great deployment today, but things will change, right? New clients, new applications, your RF environment, the landscape changes because now there's a lot of other wireless networks near you that are crowding the RF and causing interference issues. So it'll be hard to get rid of any change, but you can definitely try to 
I, I hate to say the word future proof, but maybe the word I really want to say here is to be smart about it, right? So if you're going to be designing, design for something that you know will take you into the future. If you know that your current requirement is going to be X, let me just use that as without really getting into details because everyone's different. But if you know your future requirements are X number of clients running certain applications with certain bandwidth app requirements, then make sure that when you're designing your network, you give yourself that overhead and that room to grow, right? But the other thing that I always, always recommend is that you consider doing some, doing a uh, site survey where you have someone come in and assess the current conditions, print in an AP and walk around and make sure that it's getting the coverage that you want before you actually buy and deploy. So that that way you know what you're going to get. If you just kind of guess and say, yeah, I think one AP is probably going to be good enough and work, but you didn't actually go there and try it out, it can be tough. And I have seen cases where people would then go back and say, well, I thought one AP would work, but the reality is I wanted coverage in the stock room and the stock room's got all these shelves with stuff that absorbs the RF and I really needed that other AP in the back in the stock room too. So hard to say, but I think the best thing to do on it is to just be smart when you're planning it as much as you can. Great. Thank you. It looks like we're at the top of the hour. So um, I just want to thank everyone for attending the webinar. Leslie and Jeanette, thank you for your time. And have a nice yeah, thank day, you. everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Too.